Hey everyone, it's Jerpy here again with another video. This time we'll be doing a commentary over a plus 20 Naku defensive, and I'll be explaining what you need to do pack by pack in order to maximize your DPS, and more importantly, stay alive and keep your group alive. This isn't a particularly high key, and we were just doing it to get our tank as vault and as alt, however, there is still a lot of good information to come, so be sure to watch to the end so you can be the best rogue and M plus player that you can be. Now, let's get on to the video. As usual, as the countdown's going, we want to press Adrenaline Rush right at the very end to get our loaded dice buff, which will guarantee our two Roll of Bones buffs on our first go. We're going to mount up here and head straight to the patrol pack. So I'm playing Storm Eater's Boon Trinket. I'm going to distract the pack here, so that way we can not get it too close to the other pack that's on the mound. And I'm going to go ahead and press Boon right off the bat, pop everything I have, and... I can use evasion to avoid the stomp that this mob is doing. In all of the packs in this first area, there's a higher priority target that has a lot more HP. These are the Plane Stoppers and the Lance Masters. For the Lance Masters, you want to make sure you're always staying behind them because they do a frontal cleave with each auto attack. And then the other mobs in here, we have the Longbows, which will shoot at random people. And they do a volley of arrows, which puts the swirlies on the ground, do a bunch of damage if you get stuck in them. You can use feint to mitigate the damage as well. So that helps if you are in your boon still and you can't move or you know that you're, you're just trapped and you're going to get hit by one of these swirlies. Use feint first and you should pretty much live every time. Another mob you have to watch out for during these packs are the beast masters. You can stop their cast that they do with a stun or blind and then they won't summon the bird that chases down your ranged players and that bird does a lot of damage so if you have somebody on your team or yourself are able to stop that beastmaster cast you will make a very very happy range situation and it's one less mob to think about then you going on to the next mob you have the war spears which do a dash out to somebody and put a bleed on them this is a very high damage bleed. If there are no range in your party, it will just randomly attack melees. If there are range in your party, it will pick the ranged over the melee every time. Here going on to this Lance Master pack, you see I need to position completely behind him to avoid all those frontal cleaves. We run out for the swirly he does, the stomp, and then we blade rush back in or grapple hook back in to maintain as high uptime on the mob as possible. Because this is also a bolstering week, we want to try to prioritize our damage on the highest HP target to avoid getting him bolstered when he's very high already. Because that's just going to make him pretty much unkillable for a very long time. While we're killing this pack, I just want to thank everybody for watching and just point out a lot of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. In fact, most of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed to the channel. I would really appreciate if you take the two seconds, click that subscribe button, like the video. It helps me out a lot. It's free. Thank you guys so much. Let's continue with the video. Okay, so once you kill all the mounds here, the boss will spawn, and this boss does a couple of different mechanics. One, he does a giant circle around him that you need to get out of, or you'll get knocked back and probably die. Uh, you can cloak the damage of it, so I like to use cloak during one of the times where you have to kill the ad while he's running through, which is the other mechanic. He summons an ad that will go to each of these ballistas that are around him and you need to kill the ad before they reach the ballista because they will dismantle the ballista and then if the boss casts eruption and the ballista is dismantled you can't use the ballista to disrupt the cast a good strategy to use for the ad is when he comes in you banked up some combo points and you kidney him right under the boss then use your blade flurry. If you have between the eyes up, put that between the eyes onto the ad to start cleaving the ad and off onto the boss. If you don't have between the eyes up, rely on your team a little bit more. Keep hitting the boss until you get that up. Make sure your blade flurry is on so you're cleaving the ad the entire time. Once the boss is dead here, we mount up and we move on towards the storm area. We have cooldowns available here, so we're heading to the waterfall pack to start off, which is probably the hardest pack of all the totem packs. As a rogue, your job during this pack is to sit on the unnamed mob, with this composition in particular because we have, are limited on kicks. So I am making sure that diamond does nothing. First you want to use your kick, then after your kick you want to use a full 7 point kidney, after your kidney you want to use another kick, after that you want to use your blind, 
and then after that you have your kick again. You don't want to be wasting your kick on the unstable squall. It just isn't worth it. It's an extra mob that does nothing. It'll die instantly. Again, same thing onto this pack. We are sitting on diamond, making sure that diamond gets no casts off. We don't have to end up using all of our CCs because in this situation we have solar beam from our boomy. If you are not playing with a silent sigil or a boomy for the solar beam, you will need to do the rotation that I just said. Kick, kidney, kick, blind, kick. If you're running gouge, you can use your gouge as well to extend the CC durations even longer. You can see I'm making sure I'm setting my focus target to these off target mobs every single time we go into the pool because I'm responsible for this one. If one cast goes off, that's my fault and that can end up in somebody dying and that is could be a reason why you don't time keys. A way that you have to look at these keys, especially when pugging, is if you can do something to prevent somebody's death and you didn't do it, that is your fault. It's not their fault if they didn't press the defensive for a cast that went off on them if you had something to stop it. So if you had a kidney that could have stopped a cast and you didn't use it and somebody died because of it, that's now your fault. And that's the mentality you have to think when you're trying to push these keys. You have to go, what is the thing that I can do to make sure that everyone stays alive? So on this pack, the Kodo does two things. He does a Thunder Strike, which needs to be kicked. So we rotate on that and he does Chain Lightning. Chain Lightning, you need to make sure that you're spread out for because it will chain to other people and it does a massive amount of damage, especially on Fort Weeks. And then he also does a Thunder Stomp, which is just move away from him. This is the easiest of the totem packs with this storm collar and this is just rotate kicks on one mob make sure that you're cleaving off of everything properly and uh he goes down pretty easily you can see in all these packs there's the little orbs that the totems pick out those are the same orbs that the boss does so every time you pick one up you're getting a damage boost we move on to the boss i pre-roll the bones and we start doing our rotation during this boss you get these blue circle rings you need to make sure that you're not cleaving onto your friends there and then the other thing that you need to do is you need to try to soak as many balls as possible usually we let our healer get the first couple to make sure that he can heal through this first storm because this first storm does come super early in the fight and after that you start soaking them in you can get a maximum of 10 stacks and if you time it properly by waiting for the very last second for the balls to come in uh, during the storm you can reset your stacks to make sure that you always sit at 10 stacks you see right here we're just collecting some more and just continuing our rotation i don't bother using boon on this boss because it is just single target i kind of troll forgy there i didn't realize that cloak drops the circle completely i thought it would just stop me from eating the cleave damage i greeted grapple hooked onto him for balls don't do that that's a very bad move. Don't don't grapple hook into somebody with the circle on them. I just thought, you know, I, I, I'll be able to live the cleave and then he'll avoid the cleave if I cloak it. I didn't realize the mechanic worked like that. So now I know. You also usually want to save cloak for the electrical storm here. But again, it was a 20. I was kind of trolling around a little bit. But yeah, don't, don't use cloak like that. You want to use cloak during the storm, if anything. Once the boss is dead, we're moving over to the centaur area to continue killing the dungeon. You can see before we go into these packs, I'm trying to target the Soul Harvester. And the reason for that is because he is the highest HP target and I'll be rotating my kicks on him with the tank as well. So we're making sure no Death Bolt volleys go off because that is party-wide damage. And especially when he's bolstered and on Fortified Weeks, it does a lot of damage. We get a kind of unfortunate thing here with the birds coming in late. Ideally, you want to land on a mound where the birds are coming in immediately, so you can just start going at the whole pack. And nothing gets bolstered, you cleave everything down evenly. But we deal with it, we kite it out, and we finish the pack off. To trigger the boss in this area, you need to make sure you kill all of the mounds. All those yellow dots on your minimap, those are, you have to make sure you get all of those, and then you can start the boss RP. I rip a little bit of aggro there, it's no big deal, comes right off. Things you can do when you get aggro, you can press evasion, if you don't have evasion up, you can vanish, if you don't have vanish up, you run and you pray, you can drop a kidney on the mob, so that way you're not getting attacked by the mob that you kidneyed, and that's just one more way to stay alive if you get aggro. A lot of these mobs also have frontals and AoE circles that they have on the floor. So the frontals look like giant gusts of wind. You have to make sure that you're out of those. If you're using your boon trinket during this time, 
you want to try to wait till after one chant of death goes off or you use it in the middle of the pack as soon as the pull starts and then right before the chant goes off you use your cloak there's another mob that also puts orbs on the ground that you need to make sure you're not in if you're in your boon during one of those orbs you need to make sure that you save cloak to the very last second before that orb explodes and that's just about getting comfortable with it once you're more comfortable with how long those orbs are there before they explode you can time your cloak better to last longer so that way you're maximizing your survivability we go into this next pack and we started off with solar beam those orbs that you see on the ground those are the necrotic eruptions they do take a little bit of time to explode so just get comfortable with how long it takes for their for their load and unload and you should be fine Once that's done, we fly over to the other mound to finish that up as quick as possible. This is probably the hardest mound to do. Uh, there's a lot of things going on. There's the Shattered Soul. So if you get chosen by a Shattered Soul, you need to go pick up your soul. Otherwise, you're losing a lot of damage on the pull. Once the pull is done, you want to walk over towards the boss to trigger the RP to start. And then after you trigger the RP, you have some more time to go do more trash, which is more efficient than just sitting there waiting 30 seconds for the RP to finish. Right here I do a little bit of tech. If you land into the Bacars and then take off immediately right away and nobody else is near the pack, you'll be able to reset the the pack so that way all the Bacars despawn. And that just really helps the tank stay alive and uh, you do lose a little bit of percent from it but you can make it up with another pack. The main benefit of it this week is that you avoid over bolstering many many things. So that really helps a lot. We go ahead and we do this pack just to kill time for our lust to come back up before we go to boss. This is one of my most hated bosses of the tier. And I just hate it because there's just so much movement and it really feels bad not being able to stay on the boss as frequently as you'd like. When Tira does the spirit leap, you can see where she's going to land by a white kind of circle on the ground towards the direction that she's facing. You want to pre-lead so that way sh you are there before she gets there so you can continue and maintain higher uptime. The second mechanic this boss does is Gale Arrow. You want to have all of your melee stack and all of your range stack a decent distance apart and then you need to avoid tornadoes so if you all stack the tornadoes are very easy to see you don't get clapped by it another mechanic this boss does is repel it does a pushback and then you need to stay in a coordinated line in a way so that way you're baiting the earth pushes or the earth slams in a certain direction and then you want to rotate around the boss the other centaur does a fear and that's about it so all you need to watch out for are those two main things once the boss is dead, we go and get some more trash count because we need it in order to finish the dungeon. Whenever there's a beast caller in the pack, that is... A solo kick job so you want to make sure that they are not getting any desecrating roars off it makes a very bad time for your tank and your party overall and you can get it with just a melee kick you don't need to be doing anything funny just make sure you kick the desecrating roars and again during this pack make sure you avoid swirlies and continue with the other mechanics that we spoke of earlier in this run you can see during this pack I had aggro that beast caller a very long time but I survived because I was able to rotate my CC's and stay alive by doing so you have two options here you could either get a hundred percent trash count in that area with the centaurs or you can leave around 95 percent and go do the double centaurs right in front of the boss if you're skipping the double centaurs in front of the boss there's a very specific way of doing it as a rogue you need to pull those two trash mobs first and then have your tank pull the boss. As soon as your tank touches the boss afterwards, you vanish, 
and then it resets it so that way you don't have to pull these guys and these guys aren't necessarily hard they just have a lot of health Make sure you kick the blood shout there, the blood skirtling shout or whatever it's called. It does a fear, and that is not what you want when there are frontals going out and charges going out and swirlies going out. You never know where you're going to land. It's just something that you don't want. As soon as you kill one of them, the other one enrages. So you want to try to cleave them as evenly as possible. On this boss, you want to try to hold your vanish as much as possible for if you get the spear on you. And the reason is, if you get the spear on you, as soon as he starts casting, you can vanish it, and then he doesn't charge. So right here you can see, I wait for him to start the cast, and I use my vanish. He doesn't charge, everyone can still keep hitting the boss. At 60%, this boss phases, and the adds become active. You want to assign somebody in each of your, in your group to each of the mobs to kick in. I kick in diamond and I use my tricks to make sure that I'm not taking any aggro. I use my cloak here to make sure that I can stay on the targets. There was a lot of AoE damage there, so anything you can do to help out your healer really makes a big difference. And then afterwards, it's just the phase 1 again, but with swirlies this time. And if you get the spear, it will pull everybody to the spear and you have to run away from him. You can see right there we use the rock. Because if you stand right behind the rock and for the spear throw and everyone gets pulled there, he does his charge, but he stops on the rock every time. So that's just a way to make sure that he doesn't go running away to the other side of the map and then you could maintain higher uptime on the boss. Right there, I didn't have vanish up. I should have held my vanish for this phase especially because that spear does a lot of group damage. So just like that, easy key. We trolled around a little bit, but we still ended up doing 107k overall with this new CTO build. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Like and subscribe for more content like this.